right into it. I don't know who has the first question. Hands? Okay. Yes. Hey, hi. Um, um, I'm Gail. Hi, Gail. And I'd like to know your dance backgrounds. And did you start as singers and then get into dancing? Or did you do both at once as a mother of a dancer? How did you get into it? Well, I am not a professional dancer, although <laughs> Team Beach 2 makes me look like one. Um, I, I am Cuban, so I grew up in a household where we were dancing salsa, merengue, and you know, it was a very, you know, uh, dance kind of loving family. Uh, I, I was a singer, and then I became an actress, uh, so I don't really have a dance background. I think I learned the most doing Team Beach movie and I appreciate it so much like I feel like you know I'm in awe of these guys that just like really so kind of right so he's a dancer yep and, you know, <laughs> it's a different kind of dynamic you know you walk into a rehearsal full of a bunch of people that you watch on like so you think you can dance and you know, grab a choreography All right, here we go. Let's uh, let's get let's get this going. I had a crush on a girl in fifth grade who joined the drama club, and so I love it. Joined the drama club, and so I started acting and singing and dancing all on the same day, like when I, I was ten. It was, yeah. That's so crazy because I guess my acting story is similar to yours yeah. because in fifth grade. The Spanish teacher was making like the doing this production. It was just like a gypsy kind of dance singing kind of thing, and only sixth graders can go. And like my crush was a sixth grader, and I was like, I need to be in this show so he can see me and like fall in love with me. So I went to the teacher, Miss Sanchez, and I'm like, Miss Sanchez, can I be in the show? She's like, Girl, You spoke her in Spanish, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. She got me. Well, I'm not even And she's like, Um. You're a fifth grader, no. And also, there's no roles. So I went home, and my neighbor, Angelica, was in the show. And I told her, can I see the script? And I read it, and I noticed there wasn't a bad girl in it. And I said, well, there has to be a bad girl. So I went the next day, and I said, can I play a bad girl? I, I pitched her an idea. And she, I don't know if she felt like sorry for me, or she like, was like impressed that I took this initiative and she put me in, in the show. I, the guy didn't fall in love with me. <laughs> I didn't I, know that, so. I know, but like, you know, I fell in love with acting. So yeah. it kind of that's worked out. my story too, that's so funny. I'm like, didn't crazy. fall in love with the girl, but fell in love with art. That's, that's how it works out. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. Thank you. Uh, yes, right there. Um, in the movie, you said you wore peace this time. Yes. Was it hard to move around and dance and keep it in place? It actually was, more so than the first time when it was all my actual hair. Um, because, you know, I was doing like, ba 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 and like feeling that thing go, <laughs> you know? I was kind of distracting a little bit. Um, but, but it was definitely like a lot better for my hair. <laughs> um, all that teasing and stuff. Uh, but, and, and, and also like your hair kind of just stays in, a, in that shape. With the piece, it would kind of just like go all over the place. So I felt like it was more maintenance. If, if we have to get that beehive going again, then I probably would do my hair again. <coughs> I think you had a question in the front row. Um, yeah, actually, one of my readers wanted to know what kind of um, what advice you have for an aspiring um, musician, artist, dancer. Sure. Um, well, I mean, like, I guess, well, honestly, the advice that I, I typically start out with is, is know why you you want to do it. You know, there are a lot of people that come out to, to LA, move to New York with the idea of becoming famous, and uh, typically those people don't find success in their field because their their passion is driven and uh, from from a very different place and it's the people that um, like really they, 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 they do what they do because they love it that tend to find success because people you, you know you gravitate towards people that all have they're like-minded you know what I mean so understand why you're doing it firstly um, secondly God, it's so it's cliche and you're gonna hear it a ton but I just don't take no for an answer I have a, uh, one of my favorite songwriters of all time. Her name is Diane Warren. If you don't know who she is, you, you absolutely you should absolutely look at her. She, her discography is ridiculous. She's written with everybody from Cher to Beyonce. She wrote, uh, if I could turn back time, like just ridiculous discography. She, oh, oh man, oh, <laughs> go to carry on song. That's the one. <laughs> um, she, she has not had to write a song for anybody for 20 years. She has, she's made more money than you could ever 
ever even dream of. Um, but she still does. She pitches. She she writes songs every day. She that's just she does what she does because she, she loves, loves it. it. But that that hustle started. She's the pitch queen. That hustle started when she was seventeen. She was uh, at you know at that time there, there weren't MP threes. There weren't you know CDs. You could, you had to deliver packages of, of eight tracks to different labels and, and publishing companies. And she. Was she worked for a publishing company that would deliver packages of you know songs that producers and writers would put together, but she would deliver her songs. That hustle started then, and it never stopped. Reason being is because she loved doing what she did. She couldn't imagine living a life where she wasn't writing songs and making music, and that you know turned her into a multi-billion-dollar, crazy, incredible songwriter that you know doesn't have to work a day for the rest of her life, but will until the day she dies. That's, those are the people that find success, and it's also drawing like-minded people. Yeah, um, I would also say, you know, it, it's in that, that kind of world, it's not like a sprint, it's a marathon. Mm -hmm. Have patience, educate yourself, not just with, you know, the, the, the craft that you want to do, like the acting, dance, and music. You also should really, like, try to excel in school. I don't know how, like, honestly, like, I don't know. Much you call of, my son and tell him that? Yeah, I'll, I'll give me his number, I'll tell him. Uh, there's there's, there's, there's uh, so much of, of my like artistic and, and the choices that I've made have come through the education I received. You know, so really apply yourself, give your give everything you do hundred percent because then it's more likely that the thing that you, you invest the most time in you'll give hundred and ten percent. So yeah, just, and don't give up. Keep it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell us any like funny kind of behind the scenes stories? Is there anything that happened? <laughs> oh goodness! I, I honestly, I I don't know any funny behind the scenes stories because I spend most of my time at Crafty. Uh, <laughs> uh, anything that happened on set happened on set. I was eating. Um, so, <laughs> no, I mean. Um, John DeLuca made up this game. I don't know if it's a real thing, but it's like a rap game, and it was and I was terrible at it. It, it was just. I really made up the game. Oh, you made up the game? I thought it was John. I'm totally kidding. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, like, it, it, it's like the tree without the branch. It's like the olive without the something sand. That rhymes Wait, yeah, well, something that rhymes with But I'm the worst rapper of life. And But everyone would get really into it, and the ones that were good, it was like really impressive. Will Loftus would like take on in, like a new persona like if he was like a really rapper was a and he was just like it's like the sun yeah. and it's like really fun kind of stuff like that um, oh my god we were always just having a good time with each other um there were many times where I, I just showed a video about of, with my the sand that was in my shoe because we were dancing on the, the sand and it was like never ending <laughs> like it would just keep coming out um, and this the, these guys would always like sing and uh, there was there's one video that I have of Jordan singing Stay With Me by Sam Smith and Ross oh, yeah. playing the guitar and it was just like beautiful and like so gorgeous and then all of a sudden you hear at the end like Keep it down! <laughs> like somebody from the hotel. And I was just like, do you not hear this gloriousness that's happening? So, um, yeah, we, we all have a lot of good, good fun times. We were trapped on an island together for two months and we were told to make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we did. <laughs> okay. uh, do you want to? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. We're fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll get her first. Um, can you tell us about rehearsals? Um, we, uh, for, for this film, we started, um, actually a year ago, I think, this, sometime this week, it was like a year ago this <laughs> yeah, week we started. July, uh, yeah. yeah. and, uh, we conditioned for a month. We, it was, it was learned choreography for, for about three weeks here in L.A., um, and then we, we moved to, uh, to Puerto Rico, and we rehearsed, we rehearsed there for another, uh, like, week or two. Um, and a lot, honestly, most, most of the time spent in studios were, Conditioning and then choreography happened like closer to the end because I mean so much time spent you know on the beach and different terrains and you know different weather you have your body kind of has to deal with a lot but what that put us in was the top physical shape that we all ever. I ever was been. not in top physical shape. Well, she was busy <laughs> filming a, a multi-million dollar blockbuster. Oh, and, yeah. and, and, 
Newark, Louisiana. But um, so I missed all their rehearsal yeah. and conditioning. I like was eating jambalaya and like you know crawfish. <laughs> um, but I would get videos sent by them of the choreography and kind of in between takes have to learn Team Beach Two choreography, which obviously you've just seen the movie. It's incredible and it's very fast and it's really kind of just like on another level um so i didn't i didn't get to to condition shucks um but but it was it, it you know i i commend them so much because they did so much work beforehand and i kind of just like skated in and been like got three hours of practice guys let's do this um but yeah it's cool oh shit I did. Oh, yeah. My 10 year old daughter is an aspiring fashion designer. She wants to know if the costumes were comfortable, and if not, what would you have changed? What a great question. She asked the she question. She asked that. Yeah, she, she like gave me suggestions on it and everything. Like, oh, if they weren't comfortable, you, they should put memory foam in them so that they fit. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have her make clothes for me. We're actually going to take that down, memory Goodness foam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you know, the. Being a, a biker, bikers and surfers are very different. Yeah, they they had a little bit more comfort. I feel like we had to do the leather and you know the all that stuff. Um, I was very comfortable. You know, it, it is hot. It's Puerto Rico. It's hot, so being in leather is not ideal. Um, <laughs> but it, it it wasn't. It never felt uncomfortable or, or you know, there was. If, if your daughter can figure out a way to make leather a little more breathable, <laughs> that would be fantastic. I'll the beautiful tell thing her about our that. wardrobe team, and honestly about all of the, the creative aspects of our team, I mean, you know, doing it a second time around, like, you know, we all pretty much knew what, what needed to change in terms of what we needed as actors and as dancers in the film, um, and we, we can, I mean, had the, the freedom to speak up and say, That's listen, cool. we need, this needs to change, these shorts aren't really working, this is the reason why, blah, blah, blah. blah things would change, which is, is really great. I mean, like, that's what's conducive for a working environment at that capacity, and that's exactly what we got. I had a fine. story. Well, when we did the reprise of Falling For You, which is kind of really cool because we get to see one of, like, the popular songs from Teen Beach Movie in a different kind of way, um, I initially had to dance in that outfit with that had the corset, and, you know, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I can feel comfortable dancing with this. Like, so right away, it was just like, all right, let's figure something out. And we got a new outfit where I felt really comfortable and I could have this guy push me off the stage and fall down. And, you know, so um, it, they were very open to kind of like uh, uh, working with us and what made us feel. To make sure that oh. throughout all the violence that I, you know, she was Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very, very, very safe. Um, Great. Thank so we you. probably have time for one more question, and then we'll get up and move a little bit. Uh, yeah, just going off that, was there any time, like, if there was, like, a choreography thing that wasn't working, were you guys able to really do that, or you just had to get it down? Yeah, there, yeah, there definitely was. Um, there were some harder moments um, on the beach where choreography was concerned. We, you know, we rehearse on the hardwood floor, and well, obviously when you, when you shift to the beach, there's not a ton of rehearsal time. You know, like we didn't have mirrors on the governor's beach where we could <laughs> go over things, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, we, we tried to suggest that. It didn't really work out, but uh, um, yeah, no, the, the, like, I said, like I said earlier, everybody had a voice in, in the film, and, and all of the dancers are, you know, I mean, so you think alumni, like incredible, everybody's toured with different artists, everybody has, you know, an, an incredible amount of experience, which is really great, but the, even as the actors, um, we could say, I feel this is a little awkward, is there any way we can shift something this way? Other people would be like, oh, that actually is a little bit easier, let's do it that way, good stuff, good good, good suggestion, Chrissy, like that, that would work out that way, and at the end of the day, the, the product turned out really well, which is, that's what everybody was concerned about. Yeah, it's a, it was a very open set, and everybody was very, um, you know, open to our like input, and because they wanted to make the best movie possible. And I feel like uh, Christopher Scott, who was the choreographer, just did a brilliant job of like stepping up the choreography in the second one. Um, I'm really proud of this movie, not just because of the spectacle. Like, yes, it's bigger, it's better. Like, the music is, but you know, there's so many. Uh, uh, aside from like the dancing and the costumes and all that stuff, there's so many wonderful messages in this movie. You know, I'm a big uh, about female empowerment, and you know, the, we're seeing these two girls, Mac and, and Layla, have an actual friendship. And I, 
not compete against each other for something. And I feel that that's really important for our young girls to see, and that there are healthy friendships and relationships. I mean, you know, even with uh, with Ross and Garrett, with their characters, they're both trying to, you know, the, the friendship is so important in this movie, and they both help each other figure out, you know, um, things that, that, that they might, might have felt insecure about, which is also a big thing for kids, you know. So aside from all like the great, you know, musical numbers and the dancing and all that stuff, I feel that this is a great movie for kids because it just shows you how important friendship is and shows you like healthy and positive friendships with, girl, with females. And it also like, uh, you know, tells you to believe in yourself. You know, Ross's character, um, Brady, has this amazing talent. Like he can make these surfboards and you know he's kind of insecure about it until Tanner kind of just gives him the confidence to share this with Mac. And she's so open and so positive and you know we have that support system and it's up to like moms and dads to like encourage your kids to be like, you know, you can you can do this and you can like uh, you can believe in yourself and you have this support system. So I think that that's like the biggest thing that comes out of this movie, um, aside from all the cool clothes. <laughs> um, yeah. They're pretty cool. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.